Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlock big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we will unlock the book The Triumph of Seeds, How Grains, Nuts, Kernels, Pulses, and Pips Conquered the Plant Kingdom and Shaped Human History. What comes to your mind at the mention of seeds? Maybe some listeners will think of grains and bread, some will think of nuts and vegetables, or perhaps nothing will come to their mind. People in modern society rarely care about or observe the seemingly irrelevant world of plant seeds. However, did you know that seeds are closely linked with the future destiny of humankind, and seeds have long ago risen to a national strategic level? On the Svalbard archipelago in Norway, there is a large building called the safest Noah's Ark on Earth, which is located more than 1,000 kilometers from the North Pole. It is the global seed vault. As of the beginning of 2018, the number of seed samples stored at the facility has surpassed 1 million. Humans can only open the Noah's Ark once they have encountered nuclear war, asteroid impacts, climate change, sea level rise, or other doomsday crises that have caused the destruction of seeds in the outside world. Seeds will turn out to play a vital role during the life and death of humankind. Small seeds can be spotted everywhere. Apples, bread, coffee, soy milk, silk fabric, etc. are gifts given by the seeds. Around us, seed plants make up more than 90% of our flora, and have become one of the most vigorous groups of organisms on Earth. This also means that the plants we usually see are pretty much all seed plants. In the vast plant kingdom, what special abilities do seeds have and how do they make their mark on the plant kingdom? It may be hard to imagine that other kinds of plants have dominated the Earth for more than 100 million years. For example, in ancient times, spore plants were like noble lords, who led the landscape with large-scale forests filled with dendritic stone pine plants, equisetum plants, and ferns. Compared with the spore plants, seed plants are regarded as having humbler origins with only a few plants playing a leading role in the ecosystem, such as cypress, cycads, and ginkgos. What about now? Those forests of spore plants have long decayed and become coal. When algae plants took a back seat, seed plants dramatically seized the victory. So, how did seed plants successfully conquer the plant kingdom? What are the characteristics that allowed them to turn the tables and change their status, thus having a considerable impact on the progress and development of our human civilization? This book will answer all your questions. Thor Hansen, a famous American biologist is the author of this book. He is not only a wildlife conservationist but also a brilliant popular science writer. With great tenacity, he has traveled across the globe, ventured deep into tropical rainforests and followed the magical stories of seeds on this planet. His first work The Impenetrable Forest won the 2008 USA Book News Award. Another book of his feathers, The Evolution of a Natural Miracle won the John Burroughs Award representing the highest level of writing in the field of natural history in the U.S. Next, we will discuss the core content of the book in three sections. Part 1, Seed Nutrition Part 2, Seed Defense Part 3, Seed Dispersal Okay, let's discuss the first part, Seed Nutrition. What is the meaning of seed nutrition? Don't worry. We can provide a simple explanation. Most people only have a general concept of seeds, believing that seeds are just pips of varying sizes. In terms of structure, seeds can be dubbed a baby plant in a box with its lunch. It is easy to understand the meaning of baby here. To be specific, a tiny acorn will grow into a giant oak, and the acorn which is the seed of the oak tree is the embryo of the plant. The biological term of box is called a seed coat. When a seed germinates, it will slowly push through the seed coat, just like a chick hatching out of its shell. The seed has a more important structure known as a nutritive tissue. That is to say when the baby is born, the seeds are already carrying nutrition, part of which supports their germination and rooting. 
They do not need to draw nutrients from outside sources like human babies do with breast milk. The seeds mothers have stored nutrients in each baby's box in advance. The benefit is that the seeds do not need to work hard to acquire nutrients from the outside during the early stages of their growth. Therefore, the seeds can move and disperse quickly to other parts of the world. Of course, different mother plants store varied nutrients for their children. For seeds like wheat and rice, the principal nutrient is starch. The nutrient in cocoa beans is fat, and the chocolate obtained from processing cocoa will bring a considerable fat intake to consumers. For example, as one of the largest seeds in the world, when a coconut matures, the liquid inside solidifies and becomes copra, which is dried coconut kernels. And with minimal processing, copra yields over half its volume in coconut oil. It is one of the top five vegetable oils and a common additive, which can be found in margarine and even sunscreen. In general, seeds contain a wide range of nutrients, including starch, fat, oil, and protein. So, is there only one specific nutrient in each plant? In reality, this isn't the case. There is a sort of second generation of richness in the plant kingdom. An avocado's mother plant packs starch, fat, protein, and other nutrients into its box all at once. As a result, its seeds can fully enjoy the nutrients during several months of germination, and even for a few years after the process is complete. Still, an overabundance in a nutrition package is also not a good thing. Avocados cannot feed too many children at the same time, and its seeds disperse slower than rice and wheat. Now that we are familiar with the various nutrients of seeds, let's take a look at the impact of seed nutrition on human society. We know that seeds are rich in nutrients, and grains have gradually become the staple diet of humans. Our basic diet for the last few thousands of years has included rice, wheat, sorghum, and eventually corn and potatoes, they all provide energy for human activities. These grass seed crops ultimately provide us with energy in the form of starch. If you observe starch with a microscope, you will find that it is like a pearl necklace hanging on a flimsy silk thread. The magical enzyme in the human body cuts the silk thread like a pair of scissors and finally releases sugar. As a result, we no longer feel hungry. Through the large-scale cultivation of these crops, humankind entered the era of agricultural civilization and left behind the hunter-gatherer period. Since then, grains have become an indispensable part of human life. They have become fully integrated into the economy, traditions, politics, and daily life around the world. Throughout human history, we find that grain has been the source of many transformative events. For instance, when food prices skyrocketed, people's life necessities could not be met, and society would thus become unstable. During the later Roman Republic, the Republic was on the brink of collapse, and social conflicts continuously worsened. Leaders at that time would appease the people by giving out free grain. Grain subsidies were also signed into national law, such as the Grain Law of Gaius Gracchus. This law also served as an important political tool for the empire. Believe it or not, the state also invented the goddess, Anona to symbolize the grain dole. Anona was often made into statues or cast into coins. During the 4th and 5th centuries, at least 14 riots resulted from fights over food in the Roman Empire's capital. By the time Rome was under siege by foreign invaders in 408 AD, the grain dough was cut in half, and the entire capital was ultimately overrun. Some historians even said, bread, or the lack of it, finally destroyed the Western Empire. The evolution of human history seems to be a game of life and death between food and survival. We have now reviewed the first part. Nutrition comes naturally in seeds and does not need to be taken from outside sources. Different plants provide their offspring with various amounts and types of nutrition. Since seeds are rich in nutrients, grains gradually became the staple of our diet and the primary source of energy for humans. Human society thus entered the agricultural era. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. 
Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.